in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed truly is a blessing for me thank you praise the lord i want to encourage everyone sincerely please do try to get the tapes for yesterday and this morning this is not about this is not the greatest gift you can give someone this weekend as far as i'm concerned is to support someone with this that you take the tape and tell the person please listen don't just collect it and keep it because the truths that come have in them the ability to set men free hallelujah tonight's teaching will be very brief and then we'll be praying for the sick and trusting god but i want you to be very sensitive in the spirit inside outside there's so many people scattered all around this auditorium and outside and many following from different parts of the world and um i want us to lend our destinies our attention and whilst i speak when the power of god comes upon anybody just guide them quietly just help them so they don't injure themselves and you <sighs> Tonight's teaching is one of the eight mysteries that the Spirit of the Lord gave me. I may not have time to share with you my spiritual journey and my walk with the Lord. A number of you have read and heard about my encounters with the Lord. And every true apostolic ministry is based on the mysteries committed by God to a generation not just to an individual, not just to the church. And one of the mysteries that God committed, remember we taught that the mysteries of the kingdom are the secrets by which we walk practically in dominion. The teaching, if understood tonight, will totally not just heal and deliver, but will bring serious transformation not only to this territory, not only to this state, but even across the neighboring regions. And I pray that within the few minutes we have to share the truths that the Spirit of God will breathe upon this message. In the name of Jesus. Tonight I'm teaching on the mystery of the body of Christ. The bride of Christ. Tonight's teaching will bring spiritual stability to every believer and will grant us access to be able to experience the fullness of the life that is resident in the Christ. that life the second encounter is the encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit it is true that the Holy Spirit engenders the new birth experience please listen but it he has a separate office are we together now 
John chapter 16, Jesus was teaching the, the disciples and he says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, 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 I command you to let that lady go now. I declare, let her go now. Let her go now. Don't mind me. Let me just do my mad thing. Let her go now. I speak to this spirit that I see. Release that dear sister now and release her family in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That person is here and when the power of God comes upon that person, is is a serious emancipation God is bringing to his sister and her family now. In the name of Jesus. The Lord just interrupted me. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that person be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let's continue. The third encounter is the encounter with the Word of God. The thoughts, the logos of God. And then the last encounter is what I want to teach now. Encounter with the body of Christ. Many believers have not known that the body of Christ as an entity needs to be encountered there. There are dimensions. Am I doing anything wrong? Okay. There are dimensions of spiritual possibility and there is a huge price to pay if you do not understand the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, please. We are Bible students, so let's get to the word. We'll read from verse 27. We'll read in context. Apostle Paul is teaching the church in Corinth and he's he was teaching them on what we call the Holy Communion. Are we together now? And he begins to borrow a, an expression that we'll be using tonight. He's teaching them, this was at a point where the people were handling the communion carelessly, Pastor. And some of them would take from the wine and get drunk. There was a lot of lawlessness. So Paul was bringing order to the church. Are we together? Verse 27. So he's speaking about the body of Christ and the cup. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Next verse, please. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning. Please keep verse 29, just keep it up there. Not discerning. So what is the sin here? Not discerning. So he's not just talking about communion like wafas and zobo. No. Those are just emblems. They are representations of a higher reality that the the Christ has a body and that the body must be discerned. Are we together now? So that there is a crime a believer can commit and it will short circuit his experiencing the fullness of Christ. And this is what he calls it, not discerning the Lord's body. What is the consequence? Verse 30. Read with me if you are a Christian. For this cause, stop, what cause? The cause of not discerning the body. What has happened to many? Number one, many are weak. Number two, many are sickly among you. Number three, many sleep. The word sleep there is die. When was the last time you saw an obituary and they told you the reason why this man died was because he did not discern the Lord's body? It's a very powerful teaching that you can encounter Christ and yet not encounter his body. And this is the resultant effect. Your life will be short-circuited. That the body of Christ as an entity must also be encountered. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Very powerful. Just follow me. And while you are following me, pray for grace. So that I'll be able to just touch on this. 
Let me start by teaching something. Please prepare two or three of you. I will make use of you shortly. There is a bias that happens to a believer on account of the dealings of God with such a believer. Now I'm ready to have two or three people. Any gentlemen, please. Just two or three of you. Just come stand, space yourself. God bless you. Thank you. Ah, you're allowing our uncle to come. Please, sir, you, you may go back, please. You really want to come? I'm not sure. Thank you for your humility. God bless you. Please just stand, everyone. Watch this. Now, when you begin your spiritual journey, please, everyone, pay attention. When you begin your spiritual journey, everybody starts from the same pace born again, prayer, church, etc., etc. Are we together? But whilst you progress in your dealings with God, based on the predeterminate counsel of God and your call, your office, and your dimension, the Spirit of God begins to diverge everybody to different realms of operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And there is a side effect to that act. That's what I want to start teaching. That means that if this man has been destined by God to, to work in a prophetic ministry, for instance. Notice that the nature and the character of the dealings of the Spirit with this man may not be the same as this man. They all start from the same group or the same fellowship, yet you will begin to notice an unusual grace for prayer and fasting. Above the average, you may not know why, and the colleagues may think he's just been overzealous. But it is, it is the separations of the spirit so that you will begin to have the personalized dealings of the spirit. Please listen. Now, because of the character of that dealing, when he has been isolated for a season, the curriculum of his dealing with the spirit will not capture many things that his life needs. For instance, the spirit of God will not teach this man at that point of, of tutelage on excellence on finances. He may buy a book on finances and the Spirit of God will say, drop it. Read a book on prayer. Watch this. This guy is being trained to be a prophet to the nations. But there is a side effect. Because he needs to have grace for finances. He needs leadership. He needs administration. Yet God will unpurpose administration. Yet God will unpurpose for Because the only part he would teach is the part that was captured in his dealings. So chances are that this man will have a church. And in his church, he would trivialize excellence. He would trivialize administration. The only thing that will happen in his church is an extension of what happened in his secret place. Listen, please. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Now, this guy... His destiny is to be a kingdom leader and an administration, uh, an, an administrator. Are we together? The character of his dealings, his personalized dealings with God, may not capture too much of prayer and fasting and warfare and all of this. This guy will be encouraged to go to John C. Maxwell's Leadership Institute. Are we together now? And he, he will be very logical and academic in his approach. Follow me now. At the end of it, this man will be able to raise CEOs in his church. They will be exceptionally brilliant people, intellectuals, but the deficiency of this dimension of dealing will reflect in that church. You will find out that people are doing well, getting jobs, becoming captains of industry, but dying of sickness, prayerlessness, carnal, backsliders, the dealing of God was supposed to leave you needing the body. Hold on. We are building something. So this guy, the nature of his dealing can make him believe all that God taught him is all there is to be learned. Are you seeing that now? And so everybody he mentors or teaches will come from a standpoint of that limitation. Not encountering the body will cause this man to destroy so many people. 
because many people will be poor and broke, families will break up, divorce rates will be high under his leadership. And this one here is going to be obituary upon obituary. Darkness will move in and out of the church unhindered. They will participate in the service. The only evidence of God in that church will be prosperity. Now watch this. And these are their uncle here. Now God takes him to a dimension where the grace of a teacher is what his destiny is going to be holding and manifesting. Because of that, he will encounter the spirit of revelation in an unusual way. This man can lock himself for one week, not praying, no, just studying. Any book at all, he will have a library that is taller than him. Now listen, he may not even know what is sponsoring that passion. Now, if this man stands from where he is and mentors his children in the gospel, do you know what is going to happen? If he's not careful, he will teach them to trivialize prayer because that was not an emphasis in his training. And he will teach them to, to de-emphasize administration. Everybody say the body of Christ. Revelations 21. Mm. I will show you what the bride of Christ looks like. Because Christ has a bride. The name of his bride is his body, the church. Revelations chapter 21. We'll read from verse 9. Are we there? And there came unto me, please look up, one of the seven angels which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, let's read together now, come hither, and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So we're about to see the wife of the lamb now. Ready? Next verse. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city. So the bride is a city. The bride is a city. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Uh huh. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious. Look at the description of that bride. Even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Read on, please. And had a wall, this and that and that, having the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's go to 13. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. Uh-huh. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. 16. Now read with me if you are a Christian. Ready? This is still the Lamb's wife. It says, and the city lieth. The word four square means balance. The bride is balanced. And he says, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. Listen, and the length and the breadth and the height of it are no exaggeration, no imbalance. That's the lamb's wife. That the dimensions of the lamb's wife, every dimension was measured perfectly. Listen, listen. Truth can kill. It's not only a lie that kills. When truth is exaggerated beyond the boundaries of its usefulness, it can still kill. Satan does not only use a lie to kill, he can use truth to kill. Imbalance is more dangerous than error. Because it will cause you to, to exaggerate a thing and a truth beyond the proportions of its relevance as a portion by God. There is nothing wrong with prosperity and teaching about prosperity. But when it is exaggerated beyond the boundaries of its usefulness, it will now destroy the hearers. There is nothing wrong about the knowledge of the operation of demons and deliverance. But when it is exaggerated beyond its boundary, it will lead men to bondage again and again. It will lead men to bondage.
Apostle Paul teaches us that there is an error in the body and that that error in the body, if not corrected, will destroy the potential of many believers. Now, I'm using only these three people, uh, but it can be more. So let's call these three the body of Christ. Everybody say the body of Christ. Notice, notice that the body of Christ is not an individual. It's not a ministry. It is when they come together that they form the body of Christ. That means that the best a man can be is an effective part, an effective member, that no man has what it takes to represent the entire scope of all that Christ is. No matter how anointed any man or any church is, it is not given to an individual man or ministry to single-handedly present the entire picture of the Christ. It is not in God's economy. No single person can do that. When Jesus took the bread, Pastor, he broke it into different dimensions. Remember the bread is him. And he broke himself into different dimensions and shared it among the apostles. Twelve representing his government. No individual can carry all the bread alone. It is when they come together that they will form the complete bread. So everybody takes a piece of that bread. But the problem is when your dimension now becomes a proposition that that is all that God is, it becomes dangerous. That means, watch me this, that means there are people today who should not die if they understood certain ministries. But because they were taught and mentored that those dimensions are not necessary for this cause, many are sick. There are many poor people today who love God and they are well-meaning and there are graces in the body that should solve their financial problems but they have been mentored to trivialize that dimension that it is less spiritual than prayer and fasting so they are fasting giants and great apostles and prophets but they begin to manipulate people because the reality of economic hardship must be solved For this cause, a popular saying is Hakane Allah Nigeria. Look at what the Lord just did to these people now. You know, I told you something that when your pain becomes indefinite, you will stand a chance of creating a theology around that pain to explain that God can no longer move in that dimension. This is what has happened to the body of Christ. Everybody who wants to prosper we usually try it quietly and feel many times quietly and out of that pain like putting your hand in fire just bring it out quietly and say god does not prosper anything that all is prosperity no 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 no, no, no. we don't throw the baby and the bath water together please understand this revelations chapter one Thank you, Jesus. You are opening our eyes. This is the revelation that changed my life and transformed me. Revelation chapter 1 from verse 9. We are reading down to 13. Please everyone look up. I, John, this is Apostle John now, in the Isle of Patmos, who was your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the Isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read on, please. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me, so John was caught up to the realm of the spirit. I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Uh-huh. Saying, I am Alpha, Omega, the first, last, what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches. And he lists all of them. Next verse 12. I turn to see. Now watch this. Please come together, sirs. Can we just come together? Let me dramatize what you are reading now. John is hearing a voice speak to him. Are we together? John turns to see that voice. And then when John turned, he didn't see a man. He saw seven lampstands. Are we together now? 
And then when he, and you know that that lamp stand there stands for the complete church. So when God spoke and John turned, he didn't see God, but he saw the church. When he kept looking at the church in the midst of the lamp stands, verse 13, in the midst of the seven lamp stands, what did he see? One like unto the Son of Man. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, no matter how bad the church is, Christ is still in the midst of the lamb stands. There may be imperfections, I agree. There may be exaggerations, I agree. There may be childishness and carnality, I agree. There may be manifestations of flesh and limitation, I agree. But were you not taught that husbands love their wives? A, a, a man was designed to love his wife unto death. If your wife gets injured, do you run away? Please talk to me. It's a covenant for life. In the midst of the church, Christ is there. Are we together now? In the midst of the exaggeration, the man is a true man of God. He just likes money. May God help him. But just because he likes money may not necessarily mean he's evil and wrong. If you throw the baby and the bad water, you will miss out on that grace. And the bad water, you will miss out on that grace. Just helping you know that an encounter with the body of Christ will perfect your walk in the spirit. There are many people today who love God with all their heart. And while they are praying, their pastors may have told them, if you see any material from maybe Papa Kumui, don't go and meet all those deeper life people. And the grace for holiness, genuine holiness is what he needs. But there is a provision for that grace in the body. But because of the bias that has come from a ministry that may not see the necessity for that dimension, that young man will die in sin and immorality and not be able to bail himself out whereas subscribing to that grace can take that thing once and for all listen, listen to me the fact that a dimension is not present in your life does not mean it is in the body it may not be in your church but it's in the body listen so every time you pray and ask God to help you he will refer you to you will be surprised when he says all things are possible. It is because he has vested his foot in the body. Not all in your church, but in the body. Lord, why is my life delayed? And God says the answer is in the body. But then you have taught yourself that it is only my curriculum that represents all of God. Listen. Even encounter with Jesus is no substitute for the need for the body. Remember Saul. Saul encountered Jesus on his way to Damascus. Are we Bible students? When Jesus had an encounter with him, he still referred him back to the body to continue the training. He said, go to the house of Judah. Stay there. I will send a man to continue. Why do you need a man when you have met Jesus? For this cause, Many pastors who would have been powerful men of God for this cause. Many are weak. Many children today who would have gotten jobs years ago with one prophetic word. Everything, every tragedy would have gone away. So we have Pentecostals here insulting Orthodox pastors and looking at them and saying, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't understand anything, you are just teaching boring theology. But do you know, I grew up from that kind of background and I'm grateful because it's one of the systems that has created balance in my life today. 
Many young people who just encounter the Holy Ghost have anointing but no character. Listen, listen. They may not have helped in the dimension of the spirit and all of this, but it is in the Orthodox Church of land that someone can die and in one hour people are coming to rally around and greet. Many Pentecostals, when someone dies, they know we don't believe in death. Find your way and go. Go and bury them in your village church somewhere. The grace for love and hospitality may not be in your church, but it is in the body. The pastor may not be able to teach all the revelations you know, but he has character. He can teach love. He can teach fatherhood. Listen very carefully to what I'm telling you. Our refusal. There are people in just here who anybody who is not praying in tongues and not working miracles and signs and wonders and prophesying, it is believed that they are not serious Christians, they are wasting their time and we continue to insult the fathers of faith in the land and insult everybody and especially some of us young people who are just starting with little grace here and there, one Greek and Hebrew word. Now please, I love you. I'm teaching the body. Listen very carefully. Sit down, sit down, sit down. No, this is not tell them. Sit down and let the Spirit of God talk to everyone. Pastor provided the platform for the body to listen. Let me tell you, the proof that it is God that is building you is humility and love will grow too. The moment you are growing in revelation and it comes with pride, you are altering the training. Are we together? I have the privilege of meeting so many people and sometimes I meet, my parents are here, you can see my parents, my auntie, they are all here listening to me. Now just because I'm anointed, just because I'm a man of God, are we together, should not get to me to dishonor my people and turn to be a fool. If I see my mother carrying something today, I will collect it and hold it on my head. There are people who are not preachers, but a woman has 10 children and all of them are responsible. Don't you know it's a grace? You are struggling with one child who is giving you high blood pressure. And there is a woman who, she, she was roasting corn. And with that corn, she trained 10 children. There is a grace. That man of God, if you can humble and receive that grace, that one child will be fixed at once. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. If Jesus didn't resurrect Lazarus, he would have concluded. The fact that he resurrected Lazarus meant it was not the time for him to go. Now, I don't mean to get you emotional, but do you know how many people today who have gone who should not go? Do you know how many people whose situations could be solved in moments? Do you know how many people in financial squalor today who could have tapped into the supply provided in the body? Do you know how many prayerless lives would have tapped into the grace that is able to solve them? I came tonight to teach you a dimension, church in Joss. Nobody thrives being an individual. The system of the body is the system that prevails over darkness. Listen, unity is not uniformity. Unity is not uniformity. with shock and surprise and say what is going on both of them are wrong this is what is terrible both of them are wrong and you know no matter how you look at it somebody from any dimension has a result so because of the presence of an obvious result you may think that their advocacy to detach themselves from the body is a healthy thing Pick a coal from a collection of coal in fire. Just pick it with a tongue and drop it and leave it. Don't off it. Just leave it there. What begins to happen? It goes down. The strength of the church is in her unity. 
This is why God gave unto some apostles, listen carefully, and prophets and pastors, evangelists, for the equipping of the saints. Until we all together come into the unity of faith. Are you listening to what I'm saying now? In a few minutes, I'm going to be praying for the sick. And now you will see people who came sick and the power of God will touch them just because they came. But someone, for instance, just an example, might say, oh, House on the Rock is not my church. But that's where God has put an anointing to set you free. If you have the open-heartedness, I will tell you, I will answer your question in your heart. Because for many people, our claim of running away from the body is that we do not want to be corrupted. That is the fear. I, I don't want a false prophet or a false apostle or a false teacher. I don't want a boring orthodox teacher who is just teaching me jargons and stories. And everybody has their justifications. Let me tell you this. I don't have the time, but uh, the, I wish I had the time. We need to pray. But in Judges chapter 14, please give it to us. The, the fear of associating with the body is hidden in a riddle that Samson gave. Judges chapter 14. We'll start from verse 12. Samson gave a riddle and that riddle contains a secret that explains the reason why most of us are not comfortable to tap from the vast supplies deposited in the body. Let's see the riddle. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If thou can certainly declare it me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garment. 13. But if you cannot, then this and that and that. Let's look at the riddle, verse 14. And he said, Please follow me, Joss. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. Explain. This is Samson asking the city of Joss. There is a riddle here that we want to work on now. Do you know what led to this riddle? Remember that Samson killed a lion. Is that true? He killed a lion and left it down. And then he came back after seven days and noticed something strange. That bees left the trees around and made honey in the carcass of the lion. Bees should not make honey in a carcass. There are trees. A carcass is smelly. So Samson reached out and got the honey to the carcass. And this is the riddle. That means if you can endure the smell, there is still honey in the carcass. It is true that it is a carcass. It is true that the man of God may have temper, but God refused to remove the anointing on him. He's still there. It's true that Elijah is an angry man. It's true that Moses can be angry, but he's still God's anointed. The key is to have the fortitude and the balance. You know, you've seen me preach in almost every church you can think about. I mean, I've mentioned almost any church pastor and God has granted me access. You know why? Because of this one revelation. There are churches, I have my personal convictions as a person. And the people I mentor and train, I guide them along the convictions that God has given me. But I have sustained the flexibility to be tolerant and open with the body. That becomes the key to reception. You can't go to every church and want your church to be there. No, you will see things here and there. I've gone to churches where they are extremely conservative. You don't even play a keyboard while the sound is on. Keep quiet. There are churches you don't even move around. Are we together now? You stand in one place and finish it there. And you must sustain the flexibility. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is a message for men of God and a message for the city. Can you endure the smell? of the carcass because you are hungry and in need of honey unfortunately the honey is in the carcass your pastor may insult you every time as a worker and you are saying you are a man of God and yet you are insulting me you will go to hell and you want to leave and God says stay there and then one day he looks at you and the spirit of God is upon him and he speaks over your life you have gotten the reward of that grace. How do you think Elisha endured Elijah? 
the Bible called him the man that poured water. I, I know why the sons of the prophet were angry. That the sons of the prophet were angry. That guy was at Listen, listen, there is nothing of value that is cheap. Are we together? So there are times that you will go online and God will show you and take you to a message. And the moment you see the name of the preacher, you remember what your pastor told you. That anybody who is not healed is not God. You remember what your pastor... I'm not insulting any man of God. Please, please, I'm speaking to the body. It's a correction. It's an adjustment. If I tell my people today that I am the only one that is the ultimate custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom and that no other person in the body is worth listening to, and I even teach, for instance, that no matter what it is, there is nothing out there that is different from what I have. I'm an arrogant liar. I must have the humility to admit that as effective as I am, the body, my limitations that came with my training, when God was building me, he didn't teach me on wealth. He didn't teach me on administration. That is not captured in an apostolic ministry. You will have to tap into the supply of the graces in the body that were designed to remedy that. When you see a man as though he's complete and flawless, he's standing on the strength of his alignment to the body. That's what makes him, although an individual, he functions from a standpoint of quintessence, perfection. So you look at him and he's sound in administration. He's sound in leadership. He's sound in teaching. He's sound in the gifts of the spirit. And you are wondering, it looks like God gave him everything. No. God gave him his training, his humility and alignment supplied for the labs. In 2004, I came into this city from Zaria. Because Reinhard Bonke was having a crusade. Listen carefully. I had seen that grace upon his life. And I desired that dimension. Remember, I'm a man of God too. You were about to pray. You will soon learn that you don't receive from a colleague. In the realm of the spirit, there must be a spiritual potential difference. If you are not willing to submit to that understanding and that, you cannot receive from a colleague. We are all pastors. We are all prophets. We are all this. There is ranking in the spirit. This is, listen, listen. This is not an insult. We are equal in Christ. We are not equal in the distribution of graces. Our sacrifices alongside the predeterminate counsel of God has separated us into spiritual leaders. Even among the stars, he says, one different from another in glory. I'll be stupid today to see Ben Hinn and say, you are healing, I'm healing. You are teaching, I'm teaching. How are you? We are colleagues. It's a mistake. It's a big mistake. Elijah said, if you can see me, was he not looking at him? If you discern what I represent, that I'm not just a young man you have been following after. So you look at your pastor, Reverend Akila. Some of you knew him before he started. Some of you knew his wife before she started. And to a number of us, he is just that great friend who is now in ministry. Is the reason why strangers keep receiving and going. That's why many members don't receive from their pastors. It looks like the miracles are stage managed because that familiarity, the refusal. Please, I'm not teaching human worship. I know there are men of God who have exaggerated and oppressed people out of insecurity. I'm teaching you a balanced understanding that there is ranking in the spirit. The pride of our generation has destroyed us a lot. Hallelujah. 
Jesus entered a certain city and he could not do miracles. They knew him when he was cutting wood. Ah, the carpenter's son. So you have become the evangelist that everybody knows. And Jesus looked at them. I have a lot of love and respect for people. But if you dishonor me and the grace of God upon my life, I will not fight you. But I will never have anything to do around you. Because you will not receive. It's a waste of time. It's the reason why people come to God when the case is over. Because their pride will not let them tap into the body first. It's only when the doctors look at you and say, My, my brother, uh, I'm a Christian, but the way this thing is now, I don't think you'll be up to one month. They'll say, There's one man of God there. I don't even know whether he, he claim he can heal and you drag yourself as if you are coming to somebody you paid money for. Yeah, I heard that you heal. Is it true? Listen, notice that Bartimius never called Jesus Jesus. He said, Thou son of David. Didn't he know his name? Are, are you like, is, is this making sense to you? The first night, as a man of God, I came down to Joss. There was a field, and people were standing. Bring had one a minister. By the second day, I said, I must serve this man of God. I can't come and stand like this. I came to receive something. Everybody said the body of Christ. I had seen results, but there were dimensions I needed desperately in my life. So I saw them pushing people on wheelchairs. And then I said, can I help? They said, no, you must be trained. I said, training or no training? I must walk. I must be part of this. I didn't go there as a man of God. I went there as a hungry person ready to receive from the body. As I was wheeling the chairs, I said, this is how it will be in my meetings, oh God. I am honoring the grace that already carries that possibility. One day, this is how people will come and walk out free in my meetings. I stood there for six hours. Behind every glory, there is a story. Every great man has a history. It's just that greatness can erode the scars, but it doesn't mean they are not there. Reinhard Bonke preached, permit me to use the word, a very boring message. And if you carry the spirit of revelation, it takes grace to listen to certain sermons. Because I mean, I'm there and, and scriptures are just rolling around my head and this man is just cracking a joke and people are laughing. And does this man know how, I mean, my eyes was fixed. I said, even if it's story, story, he's talking. I want to listen. Listen to this. When he finished preaching, he was about to minister the baptism and then he just took a cup of water and the Lord opened my eyes and for the first time I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit I saw a giant bird moving around the entire arena I didn't even know I was in a vision my hunger and my honor had touched him by the time I came back from that encounter I was back in the stage Back in the stage, I knew something came upon my life. I said, that's it. I've got it. I'm sharing with you a few stories to encourage you. The Lord spoke to me a few years ago that he wanted to bring me to a level of grace. And God had helped me. And God gave me an instruction. I got up one morning and I went down to Canaan land. Got the available flight and I went down to Canaan land to go and meet God's servant mission with and the rest is history. I went there, packaged the seed, went to just bless and honor him. And immediately I did. I came out. I was going to enter the car to see if I could make it back or at least rest in Lagos before I returned. And then the Holy Spirit asked me to come out. And he said I should kneel on the ground. Right there on the ground. I placed two of my hands. And he said from today you have entered the overflow anointing. This man you see standing before you is a product of many graces. Graces are like addresses. You can know where they came from. Towards the end of last year, I went to minister at a Foursquare conference. Amazing ministry. I always go to minister at their conference. And they kept me in MFM prayer ground. I said, thank you, Jesus. That was where they lodged me. 
So I waited for all the protocol. God, they won't allow me to go and pray. You know, man of God protocol. I said, finish and go and leave me. As soon as they finished, I woke up in the night and I entered the ground, the prayer ground. I said, Lord, the grace that can give a man territory like this, there has to be a grace. I can go there as Apostle Joshua Selman, who the nations are clapping for, and live in my arrogance and pride. But I went there, I said, Lord, there has to be a way. I lay down there and cried my life and prayed my heart. I said, something must come upon me. There is almost no major campground in this nation that I've not been to. There is nobody that is perfect. But in the midst of the lampstands. Please listen to me very carefully. I saw a level of excellence in House on the Rock that I greatly desired because my background did not train me to be that flawless and excellent. I saw that grace. And I knew that when you are not excellent, you look suspicious. It's, it's a revelation that I got. I, I already know the extreme levels of the demonstration of the Spirit in my life. And I know that if I look like a herbalist, I will pay for it. So I needed to tap into a grace, not a counsel. I've ministered in many houses on the rock churches and I've discerned the grace for excellence that they carry. And I opened my heart to receive that grace and it's speaking. Which grace have you ignored? Men of God, we come on stage and we vent our insecurities. The fear of losing members will cause us to create theologies that stop people from accessing the diverse supplies resident within the body. We turn our insecurities into messages and we continue to teach them. God is speaking to us. We are killing people. God is speaking to us. We are leaving people poor. Now, that does not mean as a shepherd, you do not have, you have a spiritual responsibility over your people. No true shepherd will allow the people to be careless. You will define the boundaries of their feeding and help them to grow well. But at the same time, it must be a conscious revelation in anyone that the greatest of us is only an effective part. I didn't come to this city to intimidate the men of God and to say, oh, a great apostle has landed in town. All you pastors who are not serious, I, I will be stupid to do that. There are men and women who continue to labor for the kingdom in this city. Your pastor being a chief among them. I have come to support the hands of the church. To say together like an unbeatable army, we can introduce light to this city and quench darkness. I was in Yola for a conference and then the uh, press people were ready to interview me. They were so happy because they had listened to my message. And they came in, you know, and they were saying all kinds of things. And one of them was insinuating, you know, he was giving a statement like, ah, you just came into Yola. All this nonsense they have been teaching in Yola. Thank God you have arrived. You will teach us what, you know, that kind of thing. And I stopped him immediately. I said, no, this is not why I came. I did not come to intimidate any man of God and destroy any man's work. I did not come to prove superiority because all I am and all I have is a product of God's grace. I have come by the privilege and the mercy of God to be a support to the church. No man of God will fight you when you maintain this disposition. Is God speaking to us? For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. As I minister to people every day, many times I ask myself, what would have been if these people did not meet me? Do you know that when Saul, pastor, lost his donkey, we're about to pray. Saul, the son of Kish, lost his donkey. They looked for it for three days. Everybody say delay. Say it again, delay. They looked for it and for three days they never found it. They would have gone back and said, How can I lie, Sharia? No, when donkeys are missing, they cannot be found. But the servant of Saul said, mm -mm, mm -mm. Just because we can't find it does not mean it cannot be found. He said, There is a man of God. Let's switch to another supply still in the body. A holy man of God. 
Look at what was a problem for them. Three days of searching for the sheep, the donkey. As soon as they met Samuel, my God, do you know challenges are relative, relative to the grace that is at work in your life. There are graces you meet that will trivialize 10 years challenges to look like child's play. Not every mountain is everybody's mountain. Don't generalize it. As hard as finance is, there are people that have been they are gatekeepers of that realm. An encounter with them will keep their life poverty forever in your life. But until then, it will remain a mountain that will depress you to death. As soon as they met with Samuel, I can imagine that man of God, Samuel said, no, go up, leave the issue of donkey, that's a little issue. Go up, let me tell you what is in your heart. This is a man, not an angel. As soon as Saul saw Samuel, the donkey started going back home. Look at that, no prayer. As soon as a man meets another man, restoration begins. only Jesus who are not here to see any man. I know you are right, but you are wrong. Because God minus men will not produce anything. Until there was a man Israel suffered for 430 years. Not because God was not God, until he found a man. What is there in the men of God? Why do we celebrate them? Is he not an ordinary man? Why did God show up in your world? Why did God wait until certain personalities showed up? Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm creating a healthy culture of, of honor and understanding. For pastors that misbehave, and take advantage of the loyalty of people. We pray that God will help them in Jesus' name. But then it does not mean that you see someone honoring your pastor and his wife today and you say, what is there? Is it not this man? I am men, God. Please, let's be careful. Men are men, except for what is on them. Please listen to me. We're about to pray. The prayer will be a quick walk. This is really the miracle service. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your prophetic plus pastor's excellence. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your prayer plus his revelatory grace. Imagine what will happen to your ministry if you add your teaching grace plus his grace for character and moral excellence. Imagine that your openness now begins to cover up those deficiencies. Then you will produce the lamb's wife, the bride, equal in length, equal in depth, equal in height. This is why your dear pastor, by the privilege of God's grace, brought me here. Because he discerned a supply of that grace that is able to do something to a person and a city. Let me tell you this. Sometimes I wish I'm not the one carrying the anointing I have so that it will make you see that it's not about me. It's a difficult thing when you carry certain graces because you are easily misunderstood. The way people honor you sometimes can be annoying what is there about you. a product of many graces. I was going to go to the U.S. from years ago to meet the great evangelist Charles and Francis Hunter. These were great evangelists. The last of the dispensation of the generals still alive. I wanted to go and meet them. Do you know what I wanted to do? To scrub their toilets for two weeks. I wanted to just go and work for them and serve them. My ticket, my hotel, my visa, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I was going to work, not to preach with them in a conference. When they died, I cried. 
I said, God, why didn't you give me a chance? I greatly referred mentor Dr. Miles Monroe. I was to meet with him a few months. I was in worry for a conference. And that morning, I felt a physical pain on my chest. I knew something had happened. By 5 a.m. that morning, they told me that man had gone to be with the Lord. I cried like a baby in that room. And I said, oh God, you would have given me the opportunity to tell this man how great he influenced my life. When I started out in ministry, I wrote a letter to many Jews and many men of God. I'm not even sure it reached. You know how we are, men of God. Everybody aware, don't have time. Miles Munro got my letter and replied me handwritten. Handwritten. The largest ministry in the Bahamas, an advisor to 17 presidents, a custodian of 46 bestseller books, wrote handwritten and encouraged me and told me that he believed in me and that God would use me. It pained my heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata pako tos koto preke teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.